Hello everyone, welcome back. Dr. Kofi here and this is Tutor Med, a channel dedicated to simplifying medicine. We are still on our lecture on the interpretation of the urinalysis panel. There have been two videos so far, the first focusing on the introduction and fundamental principles underlying the lab or the investigation, and the second video addresses the first component of urinalysis, which is urine macroscopy. Now in this video, we will talk about the second component, which is urine dipstick, where there is chemical analysis of the urine. If you have not subscribed yet, kindly support us by subscribing so that you can get updated when we upload new videos. Alright guys, let's get started. And so, we begin with the urine dipstick, how the test strip looks like. The test strip is actually a slender stick with test parts of various colors like blue, green, yellow, orange, etc. Each of these parts on the test strip represents or measures a parameter like glucose, protein, leukocytes, esterase, etc. Now, we perform chemical analysis or chemical comp we want to look at the chemical composition of urine when we dip the test strip into urine. Now, do you remember the experiment you did in chemistry that an acid containing solution can turn a blue litmus paper red the dipstick works the same way. The parts on the dipstick changes color when it is exposed to urine containing certain substances like glucose and then maybe leukocyte esters. So let's demonstrate this. Let's assume I want to test a patient's urine whether it contains glucose or not. So what I do is I dip the urine dipstick into the urine and then wait for some time usually the time is indicated by the manufacturer on the container so as shown you can see that for glucose you have to wait for 30 seconds for ketones you have to wait for 40 seconds and so you wait for the stipulated amount of time and then compare the color change to the various colors on the container and so when you compare the color change to the parts here you realize that the color change for glucose as you can see is closer to the negative report than the trace report and so here you see that the glucose is negative all right so let's begin with the various parameters or substances which can be measured in the urine we begin with glucose this diagram shows the glomerulus with the renal tubules now when the glomerulus filters the plasma and then the filtrate gets to the proximal convoluted tubule all the glucose in the filtrate is absorbed if not then glucose will end up in the urine presence of glucose in the urine is called glycosuria once present once there is glycosuria, it is an abnormal finding and then we need to find, sorry, find out why. The first reason is that the absorption capacity of the proximal convoluted tubule may be exceeded if the glucose load is too much. So typically in diabetics, this happens. And usually, if the plasma glucose is more than 10 millimoles per liter, then it is likely that the absorption capacity of the tubule will be exceeded. The second situation is that the absorption capacity is not exceeded, but the tubules to reabsorb the glucose themselves are dysfunctional. So tubular dysfunction can also cause glycosuria. There can be false negative results in that the glucose is present in urine, but the dipstick is reporting a false negative result. And causes include ingestion of vitamin C or as ascorbic acid. You have ketones, drugs like aspirin, and then levodopa. 
And so the next parameter we can test for in urine using the dipstick is heme or blood. Now recall from the previous lecture that we said bleeding or hematuria and then myoglobin urea, hemoglobin urea are causes of positive heme in the urine. So three of these conditions will cause a color change on the heme part. However, the difference is that hematuria or intact red blood cells create a dotted or speckled pattern of color change while the myoglobin urea or hemoglobin urea shows a uniform color change. The diagnosis of hematuria or intact red blood cells requires confirmation by urine microscopy. We will discuss this in the urine microscopy lecture. And then it is important to note that when the dipstick reports trace blood, trace blood, it means that and it's from um, hematuria then it's from about three to five RBCs per higher power field. And this may be normal, especially in or during strenuous exercise. Now it is said that false negative results are unusual. And so a dipstick that is negative for him theoretically excludes the presence of RBCs or the him pigment. Now let's look at some false positives of him. It means there is actually no him or blood, but the urine dipstick is telling us that it is positive. Causes include vitamin C and then semen. Semen in the urine can also give a false positive him on dipstick. The next parameter we will look at is the specific gravity. Now, the specific gravity compares the weight of the patient's urine to the weight of equal volume of distilled water. And so, for example, the weight of 5 ml of patient's urine all over the weight of 5 ml of distilled water. Now, this parameter measures the kidney's ability to concentrate urine, to make urine concentrated. If you have volume depleted or dehydrated, the kidney removes or absorbs so much water from your filtrate, thereby concentrating your urine in the tubules in order to preserve water, meaning a dehydrated patient would have a high specific gravity because its weight will be more than the weight of distilled water. And that is a normal compensatory mechanism. Actually, the best assessment tool to measure the kidney's concentrating ability is the urine osmolality but the specific gravity is convenient to use because it is measured routinely in urinalysis and so it is very convenient to use compared to the urine osmolality but the urine osmolality can be inferred using the specific gravity now the specific gravity of plasma is 1.010 meaning when we compare the weight of plasma to the weight of distilled water, plasma is slightly higher than distilled water. Now remember that the urine is an ultrafiltrate of plasma and at the early parts or stages, it has the same specific gravity as the plasma. However, depending on the volume status of the body, the tubules modify it either by reabsorbing the solutes or reabsorbing water said that the specific gravity remains the same or remains different. So the urine is described as isothenuria if it has the same specific gravity as plasma 1.008 to 1.012 and if you find the average of this you get 1.010 which is like the plasma. It is described as hypostenuric when the specific gravity is less than 1.008, that is less than plasma. What this means is that a patient like this probably is volume overloaded. If, if it is hypersteneuric, it means that the specific gravity is more than that of plasma and this patient is likely to be dehydrated. Now the specific gravity can go as far or as down as 1.003. And this is how dilute 
a urine can maximally be or maximally be some literatures even say that a urine with specific gravity less than 1.003 is not urine now let us compare urine osmolality to specific gravity please remember that we are using specific gravity as a proxy to measure urine osmolality which is in fact the best assessment tool to assess the kidney's ability to concentrate urine so whenever you get a urine specific gravity in reality what you are doing is you are looking at the urine osmolality just that you are using the specific gravity as a proxy and so assuming you have these solutes in blood or oh, sorry in urine we have yellow blue red green each representing solutes like creatinine urea potassium and then sodium urine osmolality takes note of only the number of solutes in the urine whereas specific gravity takes into consideration the size apart from the number of solutes so it means that you can have a high specific gravity when the urine osmolality is normal so you can have a falsely high specific gravity when the urine contains large molecules such as glucose so the glucose which has a very large weight and size raises the specific gravity despite a urine osmolality that is similar to that of plasma and so the specific gravity of someone with diabetes whose urine contains a lot of glucose may appear as though the urine the, sorry the kidney is concentrating a lot of urine meanwhile it may be that the urine osmolality is as normal as the plasma osmolality the next parameter is leukocyte esterase leukocyte esterase is an enzyme released by lysed neutrophils and macrophages and so their presence reflects a marker of the presence of the white blood cells and then for a dipstick to pick up the leukocyte esterase the threshold is should be at least 5 WCs per high power field and so the presence of leukocyte esterase usually reflects acute inflammation and this could come from a bacterial infection commonly but sometimes could come from interstitial nephritis renal TB and so on so you can have a falsely positive leukocyte esterase commonly from contamination from vaginal flora and then you can have a false negative leukocyte esterase it is there but the dipstick is saying it is not there from a very concentrated or very dilute urine sample sometimes glycosuria can produce a false negative um, leukocyte esterase proteinuria and drugs like rifampicin Thank you.